Hello, welcome to Brockwell Lane. I've been away for quite a while, had a lot of things to do recently, but I'm back to talk about this big news, uh, the Hornby TT120 range. And um, there's a bit, bit controversial, um, some people like the idea, some people don't. Uh, but there is a free club at the moment, um, which I sent, uh, which I joined, um, and I've just received my catalogue and a couple of free items there, which uh, we're going to talk about now. So, if you haven't already, if you don't know about this uh, this range, watch Hornby's own video, and I'll explain what TT gauge is. Basically, it's tabletop, and it's between N gauge and double O gauge. And there's this free club. And it gets you 15% off all orders from Hornby. And this range is only available through Hornby um, themselves, not shops. Uh, pin badge, which is there. Uh, and this, uh, what do you call that? It's a, a lanyard and badge holder. And you know my name now. Um, so, and uh, you also get the catalogue, of course. Now, the 15% off is a good idea, though nothing's available quite yet. But uh, we'll have a look at the catalogue. Now I'm not necessarily going to go into TT because I've changed from 00 to O gauge recently as you probably know. However, as this was free, I thought it was quite interesting. I thought, well, I might as well send off for it and have a look. Now the first thing that uh, strikes me is the counterweights on the wheels. That's these little blocks here. They should counterweight uh, the well, the weight of these uh, rods and things. So it should be on the other side that side furthest away from your connecting rods so that is wrong for a start so hopefully that's just a pre-production thing and they are going to solve that because if they don't I think they'll get a lot of complaints from people that know that sort of thing rivet counters like me no I'm not a rivet counter honestly now these two models on the front of the catalogue do look like TT gauge models, um, which of course they're meant to be. However, a lot of images inside the catalogue are their double ohm locomotives mocked up to look like TT gauge models with the couplers and things, uh, because they're obviously not ready yet. Although it does look like, apart from those counterweights, that the A3 at least is getting close. It does look like a production model to me rather than a Pre-production, but I don't know, I'm not sure. So your first page, you've got a little bit of an introduction to TT gauge, showing you the size of the tracks compared to the N-gauge and the double O, and it is about halfway th between the two. And here, the same with the locomotives. And that is actual size, which is quite nice for catalogues. You don't very often get that. Um, so you can see it is bigger than N-gauge, and that's one of the sets that's coming out of the Scotsman which is Scotsman the train because the locomotive in there is not flying Scotsman it's actually I think it's Blink Bonnie which is another A1 not A3, A1 I think it is that version as well but you can get flying Scotsman as well it's just going to confuse people by calling it the Scotsman set but there we go it always has done flying Scotsman and this is a quite an attractive set as well with an A4 in it, William Whitelaw. And again, unfortunately, we've got this counterweight problem on that one, which I hope they're going to solve. It's probably the same chassis, actually. So, Scotsman and the Easterner both come with three coaches, Mark 1s in the A4 set, and Pullman cars in the Scotsman set, which I think are lighted. That's a little bit more expensive, I believe. Uh, I think there's one point and an oval as well. And the price on these is pretty good, I think, especially with the 15% off, because uh, that one, which I'm probably looking at getting, maybe, is about £165, I think. Whereas if you're going to buy the engine alone, that's about 145 and the coach is 30-odd, and all the track and the controller and stuff, so it's probably worth doing, actually, that one. Quite a nice set. Now it does say analog and digital. I don't think digital sets are in this first release though. And of course they are doing the full range of set track as well. As are Pico. That one, I can tell you that is a double O gauge model. 
uh, that picture you can just tell and so are those although they photoshopped these big couplers on which I'm not keen I'm not sure whether they come with NEM pockets or whether they're changeable that's something I'm interested in finding out but you've got Flying Scotsman at the top there and again these are actual size so you've got Flying Scotsman which is an A1 and you've got an A3 uh, which is a Nighthawk and Trigo Trigo I'm not sure what that is I think it's a racehorse uh, and Silver King, which has got a single chimney and early crest. And these, I think, are about £145, but again, only through Hornby. Then you've got a BR Blue A4 with a single chimney, early crest. You've got Mallard, uh, as it is preserved. And you've got Duchess as well, um, without smoke deflectors there in LMS. And one with in green. Uh, that's an early crest one, and there's also... A late crest version. Later on to come are nine Fs and castles. Diesels. Uh, now that again is a double O gauge model. You can just tell. Uh, so that's not exactly what it's going to look like. And there's also O eight, which again I think they're pictures of their double O ones. And you've got the large logo fifty. Uh, number 40, Leviathan. And you've got the green ones, Redwood Algar, uh, GBRF, and then you've got your 66s, which again, these are all double O models, that's their railroad model. Um, and there's a few different versions of that. The HST, which I know a lot of people are, are looking forward to because it means you can pretty much buy a whole set and still run it around. Uh, like the engage ones, um, whereas in double O it's quite difficult to get a full seven or eight car set, which is what they should be in real life. A uh, minimum of seven, although some of the newer liveries, I think there were some shorter ones, the Scott Rail are shorter and things like that. Uh, and then they got uh, they are announcing here that they're doing uh, 31s, 37s, and 47s. Oh, and 67s and 73s, or 800s, but they're going to be later, I think. So uh, Helgen were going to do a 31, I know they pulled out when they learnt that Hornby were doing this range. And you've got the coaches, now those Pullmans look like the 001s again in the pictures. And you've also got the Stanier coaches, again they're, they're the 00 versions, you've got uh, LMS livery, BR Maroon. Uh, you've got Blood and Custard and the Maroon ones and you've also got a uh, the 57 foot parcels car. Uh, you've got uh, Mark 1's, Blood and Custard, Mark 2's in blue and grey and intercity liveries. Mark 2 uh, F's. Um, don't think they're doing the earlier Mark 2's, the ones with the sliding windows at the top. Uh, they're the air conditioned ones, I believe. Uh, or intercity. Then you've got Mark 3's, which are HST. D coaches, I think they're all looks like they're all buffalous ones, so they are actually the HST versions rather than the local hauled Mark threes. And you've also got this is in well, that's probably a year or more away. I think these, but the Gresley coaches, which I think is a good choice to go with the A fours and A threes and A ones. Collet coaches, they'll go with a Castle Mark one. What's that one? Just different liveries, I think. Then you've got a few different wagons, MGRs, TTAs, uh, LNER towed brake vans, which I think is a strange choice, but of course they do 001, so enables them to use the pictures. And then there's a, oh, there's all sorts of things there, I can't go through them all really. You need to order this catalogue if you, if you need to read it in depth. And you've got your set tracks. Um, I personally wouldn't go for the set tracks, I'd go for the Pico range which is coming out because I prefer the flexible tracks, um, less joints, uh, probably better running but you know you've got that option. Full range there, I think that's available already. And you've got your extension packs with the train sets. And some resin buildings, again these are just um, scaled down versions of the 001s I should imagine and Oxford diecast vehicles. 
Um, which again, uh, are nothing new as far as I can see. They're scaled down versions of ones they've already done. Whole list of buildings there to come out. And then you've just got trees and things, which I imagine are not going to be any different because trees are as big as you want them to be, really, in any scale. And also the grass powder and stuff like that, which personally I wouldn't use from Hornby. I think the woodland seems to be better. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. So is it a good idea that Ormby are going into TT? Well, that's uh, up for you to decide really. Um, I I want to see them in the flesh first. I want to see how they run. If they run nicely and if they've corrected that that thing that's bothering me a bit, then counterweights, then possibly. Um, I like to renumber things and change couplers, so I'd want to know if that was possible. I'd want to know if Fox Transfers are going to start doing number sheets for them and things like that. But I quite like the idea. I think moving into TT gauge is probably better than them trying to have a go at N gauge, which is already flooded with Daypol and Graham Farish. O gauge, maybe I would have liked them to go into O gauge a little bit, maybe, but there's enough, there's enough people doing that. So, yeah, I'd. I'd don't think it's a bad idea. I'll watch with interest, but there's a couple of things on. I just wanted to see them first, I think. But I do think that train set's a good price, especially if you join the club. 165 quid for the uh, A4 one, a bit more for the Scotsman set, but I think that's quite a, a decent price. Whether it's a good idea them selling them themselves rather than going to the shops, I can bet the shops uh, don't like it. Um, I don't know. I don't know, what do you think? I know um, when they do appear on eBay, they're probably going to be inflated prices. If you sell them, they might keep the value more. I'm not sure. So there's a few questions there. But I do like um, I like this idea better than them doing the steampunk and um, some of the other ideas they've had over the years, like the live steam. Well, I know there's people that like that. But I think it's... Uh, I'm feeling quite positive about it, really. But I just want to see him before uh, I take the plunge. Anyway, what do you think? Comments below. And I'll see you next time on Brockwell Lane. Uh, please subscribe. And like the video. Thank you. Bye-bye.